Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday morning trading room. Had a little technical difficulty with my microphone, but I trust everyone can hear me okay. So we'll see how today plays out. Yesterday, uh, tending to be a rather sideways session. We did have a little bit of a rally up late in the morning, but you can see the afternoon very, very quiet. Non-existent Asian and European sessions. And here we are still within that bigger sideways trading range. We'll, uh, we'll stay with the market here a little bit. Um, give it a few minutes to unfold. There are big announcements due today uh, at around 2 p.m. Eastern, which are likely to move the market. In the meantime, uh, looks like they may just try to bounce around a little bit. All right, so we'll give them a few moments. Uh, we've got a first micro macro cross lower here, but we are right into the primary support zone and you can see we're getting a little bit of a reaction there. Uh, our Raptor chart, it's just, if this doesn't scream sideways market to you, I don't know what does. And honestly, the best way to trade a sideways market is just to recognize that you are in a sideways market and when you are in a sideways market there's two ways that you can trade this if you figure the range is large enough you can attempt to buy the bottom third or bottom quarter you can attempt to sell the top third or top quarter Um, but you should be scalping. Don't anticipate huge follow-throughs here. The other way to trade, and my personal preference, is to let the market actually get outside of the trading range and then show you that it can stay outside. There's always going to be this reactionary move on a breakout. Same thing to the upside. The market's going to move up. It's going to react. It's going to come back. And you can prove this to yourself if you don't believe me. Is just go back to where you saw a trading range occur before. Let's say we deem this here to be a trading range. And you can see how the market breaks out and retests. In this case, it retested several times before the fr uh, finally had a little bit of a trend to it. So that initial breakout is always going to be tough to, to buy or sell. But when the market uh, gives you that retest and comes back, then that makes it a little bit easier, a little more predictable anyway. So technically the clouds have crossed. We're probably going to get a little bit of pullback here. Maybe a, uh, a number one signal. That would be the cloud crossover signal. 
but as I said, it's um, a little bit of a A bit of a uh, gong show <laughs> with all this sideways trading. Don't be surprised if you see a fake breakout. Second push entries probably advisable. And here now, a little bit of buying from the bottom end of the trading range that we identified, right? So if you went in here, tried to scalp out with a, with a buy off the bottom end of the range, I think you would have made your profit. But right now, it's really, really sideways. Huge pullback now, right back into the middle of the trading range, so... So this is when it's time to have uh, your guitar handy or your harmonica or, <laughs> or maybe a book. I suppose if you were in doubt, you know, if you took a look at the, the daily chart, uh, the daily chart, of course, still quite bullish. Here, we got time. I might as well make you a daily chart. All right, so here's your daily NASDAQ chart. You know, when you're in doubt, um, you can always stay with the bigger trend. So in this case, the big trend does seem to be up, although we're seeing some serious congestion here, aren't we? Uh, the market's starting to spend less time going up and more time just going sideways. In fact, we have a very pretty little wedge type pattern here and even a larger wedge pattern. So I think a lot of traders are anticipating a consolidation, a move lower. And we're getting close to October black October and everything where the market tends to make corrections we didn't get one last year but it's sure looking like we're going to get one this year but what I was going to say is uh, when in doubt stay with the with the big trend in this case the big trend is up 
and you can see we're getting a nice little trend line bounce here this morning. This last bar is this morning. So you could uh, entertain buy signals. Ignore the, the sell signals and just look at buy signals, in which case you would have had a buy right here. And let's just see how that may have played out. As we get back toward the top end of the trading range. Come on, look at that, right at the top end of the range there, starting to flinch again. Look at that, they're just holding right near the highs. Come on, get up there. There we go. Okay. So you can see the overall trend still having a little bit more influence on the market so when in doubt if you're really stumped for a trade and you just have to trade <laughs> try to stay with the big trend if there is one you'll be right more often than you'll be wrong
And it should be no surprise that now we're back at the top end of the trading range, back to the primary resistance zone. We're seeing the market push a little lower. I'm not sure we're actually going to get anything really tradable here this morning. We'll stay with it, but it's a little dicey right now. Okay, so we're going to attempt a cloud crossover now to the long side. Again, that's the the bigger trend, so it might be one you you want to try. No, or not. We're right back in the middle of the trading range now. Oh, Mark, you're a brave fellow. Mark uh, <laughs> saying he took tra two trades, bagged $350 profits uh, between uh, Divergence and the first micro macro cross on the Hawk this morning. Despite being slipped two ticks on both trades, I'll take it. Yeah, I bet you will. <laughs> Nicely done. So I'm thinking this is the first micro macro cross and you can see it just got up enough to hit the profit objective before turning over. We are getting a red bar buy signal. So again, this is with the bigger trend, but we're right in the middle of the daily trading range. And uh, Mark said he got slipped two ticks. That's substantial on a market like the NASDAQ. That tells me that uh, there's not enough traders uh, participating and you're likely to be brought in only to get whipsawed. You see a lot of traders who may have bought uh, near where Mark did were looking for a bigger move, like a breakout style move, see the breakout traders and they were looking for a breakout 
hence the slip. Sellers sold to them, but not at the price they wanted. They sold at a higher price, only to turn the market and try to run their stops. So it's really, really thin this morning. That's why I suggested on some of the trades, you may want to wait for a second push entry opportunity as well. So for instance, here on the red bar buy, wait and see where the market reacts and then enter above there. So that will help keep you on the right side of the trade, hopefully. And now we are back with a, a very strong bear move lower. Back to the bottom end of the trading range. Uh, we'll see if we're going to get a breakout now through the lows, a breakout that actually sticks. You know, we've got the first micro macro cross at the low. Here's the breakout now.
uh, Mark's comment here, very apt for the way the markets have been. Mark writes, I've been trying to take my moves early in the sessions lately, as that's proved to be where there has been the most volatility and movement. Things seem to slow way down after the first hour. So, Also, this gives me time to get other things done during the rest of the day, like rebuilding my deck, riding my motorcycle, etc. Typically, the first hour and a half of the day is when you're going to find your best opportunities. The lunch hour and early afternoon, normally very dismal, and then there's usually a flurry going into the close, but by and large, your best opportunities will come that first hour, hour and a half of trading. Doesn't look like we're going to get much in the way of opportunities here this morning, not so long as the market stays uh, range bound. Uh, this will be a good time to mention that I'm going to be out of town Monday and Tuesday. This coming Monday, Tuesday, that's the 25, 26. And uh, there's no internet <laughs> where I'm at. So I won't be able to host the room Monday or Tuesday morning.
Well, there we go. Again, I I would be a little more reluctant to sell than to buy, but honestly, right now, both ways looking a little bit dicey. We're just hovering right through the middle of this trading range, just glued to the median line. Trying to break the primary support, no follow through there. Testing the primary resistance, no follow through there. Lots of yellow bars here on the hawk again. Back into the hard edge. We might anticipate a bounce, but I don't know. Like I said, so long as the market stays in a sideways range, 
about all you can do is uh, hope to scalp out for a couple of ticks. Well, looks like the sellers are going to give it a go. We do have a four arrow consolidation here on the Hawk. The Falcon still a little bit of a mess. The Eagle not, well, trying to get in sync. And the Raptor giving us a possible cloud crossover signal. The clouds have crossed. We've had the pullback. We haven't had anything in the way of a signal, however. So they're trying, but nothing yet. Well, we can put that one back on the shelf. Oh, there we go. There's the crossover signal. And what I'm going to try is I'm going to do a full second push entry here. I'll actually enter. Yeah, I'll give it a couple ticks. I'll enter on a break below the low.
You see, this is starting to turn into a little bit of a triple bottom, even. If we get a uh, break here through the lows, there may be a little bit of follow through, just short term follow through. Don't know if we'll get the full swing target. All right, here they come. I think that's smart, Mark. Mark says the NASDAQ is definitely in consolidation range and probably waiting for today's report. I would agree with that. Mark says, I'm going to, into scalp mode and adjusting my profit targets to take a bit less than normal until the reports come out. This is uh, a quieter day than most. I think, uh, given world events, the whole North Korea thing, and uh, the FOMC minutes and rate adjustments and everything coming out this this afternoon. Nobody traders don't want to get on the wrong side of the market, and there's a lesson in that. In and of itself, you know, so many times as traders we bring a production line mentality to our trading, thinking. If I'm not trading, I'm not making money. No. <laughs> Sometimes the only way to make money is to not trade. Rather than get yourself into a bunch of trouble. Only to have to dig your way out later. I'm showing you this trade, not because it's a good trade or a high probability trade, but rather <laughs> there's nothing else going on. If you're looking to mirror me on a trade, I would honestly, this is the flattest market I have seen in a very long time. I would, uh, I would pack up my toys and go do something else today. I'm reading a, a couple of um, 
reports. They're all saying the uh, FOMC uh, minutes or meeting uh, are really putting a damper on the markets. Hurricane Maria is a concern, of course, for uh, Puerto Rico and maybe uh, Florida. But uh, FOMC uh, seems to be taking center stage. So until those minutes come out, I think we're going to see more of the same. I'm going to cancel that trade because really, folks, it's a sucker's bet to try to take that trade. The market may make a quick move uh, somewhere. Floyd says, what about gold? Let's go take a look at gold. Oh dear. Mark says another earthquake hit Mexico City, 200 plus reported dead. Although I don't know what effect that's having on the market. Um, you know, the only time natural disasters really have an effect on the market is if they affect the economy. Hurricane Katrina, uh, the, the biggest one to have a direct impact on uh, on the economy because of all the oil refineries down and around Louisiana put a real cramp in oil production and oil refining and because oil price and oil production is so closely tied with the economy as well when oil production and refining went down then so did the stock market. The stock market flinched at that. Uh, there's not really industry in in Mexico City. Well, there is, but not industry that's going to affect the North American stock market. It's not going to affect the NASDAQ. It's not going to really affect the Dow. Uh, yeah, Mark says maybe the oil report will have an opportunity. We'll hang out for the oil report, but I think that's going to be just about it. Um, here's gold, and you can see yesterday gold very, very quiet. Or as Elmer Fudd would like to say, very, very quiet. <laughs> um, yeah, gold prices are actually falling off a little bit last couple of days, kind of holding their own right here, attempting to put in a rally. You see, gold prices will be tied to the economy as well. So I'm not surprised to see gold a little on the soft side. Let's take a look at crude oil. And we'll play with the crude inventory report, but honestly, I would not be keen to trade today. Honest folks. You know me, I'll take a trade if it looks even halfway decent, but it's not. All right, so crude, a, a slight upward bent to it today. There's the overnight high. Oops, sorry. That was still gold. <laughs> it looks a lot like... There we go. There's crude. A really, really tight little daily range. 
Uh, crude in a little bit of an uptrend though, so I would prefer, I think, to be a buyer versus a seller. Now, I'm just going to play with this because crude is also pretty stagnant at the moment. I'll put an OCO order on, but I would prefer to be long this market. I think what I would do is, since this is the range right here, I would probably short below the median line. And I'm going to change my order to a stop limit. And I'll only allow them a couple of ticks. Now, normally I like to see the price a little bit more in the middle, so maybe I'll buy above 50.80 or in that region. Kind of puts prices a little bit more in the middle of my, my range here. We'll enable a rather aggressive stop. And like I said, I'm just doing this for something to do. It might be safer to trade the crude report after it comes out. Let's see which way it's leaning. And then trade it, bracket it and trade it. Oops. All right, here we go. Here's the inventory report. 
you can see how the volume swells when the report is released. Doesn't look like it's much of a surprise so far. A little bit of a poke lower, but nothing substantial. Well, that was a bit of a nothing burger, as they say. It's a lot of volume go through. The prices didn't do a whole lot. So if you wanted, you could oops, bracket the range a little more closely. but it doesn't seem like a whole lot's going on here too. <laughs> oh, Mark. Mark says, I picked up another 100 bucks on a quick scalp. So 450 for the day, I'm done. Well, Mark, hats off to you. That's, uh, that's really good trading, really good trading. All right, gang, um, I don't know if you just want to hang out for another half hour or if we should close up the room. We're not going to get anything tradable here today. We'll go back here to the NASDAQ to see what's going on. See if we got any kind of move. Doesn't really look like it. Finally got the number one signal. And I was looking to short below the low. So we'd be sweating that trade a little bit, but note the breakout below the trading range. Here comes the retest. If this leg moves lower now, okay, that might have a little bit of follow through to it. Otherwise, the market's just going to try to drift back into the trading range. I think Mark's got the right idea. If you're going to take a trade, just scalp. Just take a couple of dollars. I think, uh, I don't think we're going to miss anything, though, if we close up the room. So I think we'll button up shop here a little bit early today. Market's not really offering many opportunities. If you are going to hang out and try to trade, I would probably favor a, a buy signal on any of the tools versus a sell signal. Try to stay with that bigger overall trend, but you're taking your chances. <laughs> All right, gang.
gang. We'll see you tomorrow then. Bye for now.